Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing with you six cruise lines we avoid. And we're going to share this from our personal experience of having been on these lines. And also, we're going to take into account first-hand accounts from some of our friends who have also been on these lines and try to collate those into what we actually do. So this is how we actually determine which cruises to go on. And not all these are so terrible that we would never go on them, but we do try to avoid all of them if we can. First one we'll jump right into is MSC, and we've been on several MSC cruises. It's almost always ranked as one of the lowest cruise lines out there. And it's a little bit of a shame because the ships are beautiful and the price is really right on MSC Cruises. Yeah, I think that is such a huge deal because you walk in on one of these, on one of MSC's cruise ships and you are always going to be impressed. It's beautiful. They're beautiful ships. Um, their Swarovski steps on many of their ships are phenomenal. Just beautiful, beautiful vessels. But, um, and, and like you said, the price is always going to be really good. Yeah, price but is great. there are quite a few things that are the things that are really important to people that make this one of the worst, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, and we'll start with the staffing, and it is probably the most uneven staffing experience. I won't even really say uneven, it's pretty much been universally bad as far as cruise lines go. Uh, the staff on MSC, and it was a little bit better on the last Seascape one that we went on, but that was a brand new ship, and the, the staff on board, it was the inaugural sailing, and the staff on board told us they pulled an all-star cast for this, <laughs> and so maybe those staff, some of them are still on there, so it is going to vary a little bit ship to ship, but if you're on one of their older ships, you're going to get a pretty uneven staff experience, and the food kind of goes the same way. We did actually enjoy the food and the effort put forth for the most part on the seascape, but every other MSC cruise that we've been on has been so bad that we basically questioned whether we'd ever do it again. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, when I think about our experiences on the various MSC cruises, uh, I think to myself, there's no consistency here between them. Um, there was nothing that I was like, oh, but definitely I know I can count on this one thing. Or definitely, you know, I can count on the pizza being good. Or I can count on the sandwich bar being great. Or the buffet. Or the main dining room. There was no one thing that was like, okay, I know I can count on this. It's going to be consistent no matter which ship we're on. Yet that was not the case with MSC. Yeah, and also the experience on MSC is largely dictated by where the ship is originating from. So if you're going to be sailing out of Florida, it's going to be a different experience than if you're sailing out of uh, Italy or some, somewhere in Europe. So just keep that in mind that they have tried to, uh, you know, get things a little bit different for the, for the U.S. market, which was one of the shortcomings and why they were getting some bad reviews. They, they are trying to pick that up. Like on our Seascape cruise, they actually did a Thanksgiving dinner for us. We were out over Thanksgiving. Had some kind of dishes that, that I've never seen before on a cruise ship, which was really good, but still the service and the food overall was pretty lacking. Yeah, I think you hit the mark on that, uh, how it's different depending on where it's originating from, which again is another inconsistency. It shouldn't matter where the cruise ship is leaving from. Everything should basically be the same like it is with some of the other brands. You can count on it being the same, but in this case, it just depends on you know who's on the ship and where it's going. Yeah, they kind of cater to the largest common denominator. So if you're on a ship full of one uh, country of people, they're gonna cater to that, the entertainment's gonna be in that. If you're on a ship that's leaving from the US, it's probably gonna cater to that. So just keep that in mind as you book these cruises uh, because you won't, if you go on a, a cruise from Florida and then you do one somewhere else in the world, it will not be the same. Uh, let's move on to the second one that we avoid and we'd love to hear your opinion, especially on this one because it's one that not a lot of people don't avoid, but we do avoid it, and that is Holland America. And Holland America is one that is uh, very loved by the people who frequent cruises on Holland America. Um, and it's just, 
It's another one where it can be inconsistent. The thing, the tricky thing I think for Holland America uh, also is that they, um, they do cater to, you know, a certain demographic, which is great. And for if you're in that group, but if you're not in that group, that does make things a little different, a little now, different experience. Now, I will say that Holland America does have great staff. They're amongst the best staff we've ever had on a cruise ship, super attentive. And I think it's because that's the demographic, which is the older demographic that really craves and wants that attention to detail. So they do give that, but their ships are nothing special. They are not as good as the MSC ships. They're not as good as Royal ships, not as good as NCL ships. They're just not up there uh, with anything else. And the price is still very high. Now, granted, we have not been on the very newest Holland America ship, which may be better. We'd love to hear about that if you've uh, been on that one. But for the most part, they've got a fleet of kind of older ships that are just kind of blah and they're still charging a premium price for that experience, which really just isn't justified. So when we ever look at the cost to dollars, Holland America never comes out on top. So we basically just put it on our avoid list until they come up with something that's really gonna wow us, or we fall into that demographic that really wants that uh, high-end service in the buffet. Yeah, and I think it's one of the reasons uh, for what's going on too on these ships is that they tend to be more long-term cruises, more like world cruises or, you know, journeys and different things like that. So I think that plays into it as well, that especially when it comes to like the entertainment, I think that becomes a problem because, uh, you know, they can't always pick up great entertainment in some of these ports. So it does make it a little bit challenging to keep, you know, strong entertainment and those types of things on the ship as well. Now, the next one that we avoid is a shame because we just cruised many, many, many nights on this cruise line. And we used to love it. We used to would have said it was our favorite. And that is NCL. We avoid them now because of one factor. And that <laughs> is that they will nickel and dime you all day and even while you're sleeping. And <laughs> I heard a interview with uh, one of their top people about a year ago. And they said, you know, while other cruise lines are cutting their prices, we're going to raise them because we feel like our service provides that price point. And... Sure enough, they did raise all their prices, but they didn't really raise the service. It's gotten worse, but they did raise those prices. They did, and you know, it's really sad because like you said, it was our favorite for a very long time. Just disappointing to get on there and feel like every single event you're thinking, okay, are they gonna try to charge me for this? Or are they gonna try to sell me something at this? Or tell me to come to some event and you know, They'll unveil something, but it's really just to sell me something. It just feels like at every corner, they're just, you know, getting, shaking out your, your pockets everywhere that you go. And that really is not a great feeling when you're mm -hmm. on a cruise. You want to just relax and have a good time. It just felt so stressful, especially this last one we were on um, just last year. And it was just like, oh my goodness, if I hear one more announcement about, you know, going to this jewelry shop or going to this, you know, presentation or, you know, even when they're giving away things, they're really trying to sell you something. Yeah, and the prices have just gone up across the board. We used to love their thermal suites. They've really raised the pricing on that. And the value is just not there anymore. So we do avoid it. Now, we will sail on it if it's the only possible thing we could do or if the deal is just pretty good. But we go in knowing it's going to be an all-out onslaught to get more money from us. And it's not like you have to guard your wallet <laughs> once you get on NCL. So uh, we... we Put that wallet in a safe or something. Yeah, because... it is. It's like when you're in one of those places where it's famous for, you know, the pickpockets and you're always like holding onto your bag. That's how you feel when you get on an NCL cruise ship. And that's not really a, a good a good thing to have across your brand. And we will say, like Rep said, sometimes we will 
go on some of these because we have no other option. We do travel full time and uh, we do use the, we try to stay on the ground <laughs> as much as possible. And so we do use cruise ships, especially the transatlantics as a, you know, means to an end of transportation from one place to the other. And sometimes, you know, there's only certain ships going from certain places to get us from one to the other, so there is no choice. Um, so we do still do that, but we try to stay away from them as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, the next one that we avoid, we went on for the first time this last year and we've just decided it is not for us, and that's <laughs> gonna be Disney. Uh, we're just gonna avoid Disney, and it's a shame because we heard so many amazing things, and we like Disney. We like Disney parks, we like Disney, uh, you know, movies, and we just did not like the cruise. The entertainment is excellent. I will say that. It's probably the best entertainment at sea. That was amazing. But our, our bottom line opinion was that if you took the logos and the characters off the Disney ship, it's just a really below average cruise line, and you're paying a really high premium for those logos and characters. And I would just rather spend a little bit of money and go to the, the actual Disney park for a few days before the cruise and then get on a Royal Caribbean ship after that. Yeah, it does feel kind of weird because you get on the ship and you know, you're paying Disney prices, but it doesn't feel like you're getting that full Disney product in return. Whereas when you're at the parks, you're like, yeah, I know I'm gonna pay, you know, $15 for one churro, <laughs> but I know that I'm gonna have a great time because I'm in the park. That's not always the case on the Disney ships and I think that's, you know, a big factor. Aside from the fact that we're just two adults with no small children with us, obviously we have no beef with children. We have two of them and, you know, did all the fun stuff. We loved doing cruises with our kids um, when they were little. Our kids still talk about it and they're in their 20s. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, if you have little kids and you want to have a great time on a cruise ship, there are other brands that will do a much better job for you and your family than Disney. And at a lower price point. Too. Absolutely. Uh, we also, the one thing people rave about is the staff on Disney. We did not find it to be as good as uh, even Holland America. I think Holland America staff, like we said earlier, they're among the best. I was expecting the Disney staff from all the reviews I'd read and videos I'd watched to be like a step above Holland America. Simply just wasn't the case uh, for us. So I'd like to know what, what experience you've had on Disney uh, with that. Is it as good as Holland America kind of stuff or or where does it rank there? Next one that we avoid and we just avoid this one pretty much <laughs> without fail now. We will not be going back is Costa and Costa is universally regarded as the worst cruise line in existence. You look at almost any review, any list of worst <laughs> cruise lines, it's going to be Costa. Why? For every single reason. Food, staff, ships, it's just not a great experience. And if you're a new cruiser, it's not where you want to take your first cruise and, and spend your money. Yeah, it's just not going to be the same type of experience that you're going to get on just about any other cruise ship, even MSC, because like we said, their ships, at least they have, you know, a great product. They'll, they have these beautiful ships for you to enjoy, but Costa doesn't even put the effort, you know, as much effort into their ships. At least MSC is giving you something, you know, nice to enjoy and beautiful and all that kind of stuff for vacation pictures. But on Costa, you're just not going to get that. What I think was interesting too is that, uh, you know, Carnival is pulling from Costa ships trying to, I think almost, you know, kind of help rebrand a little bit and put it back out there, maybe soften them up a little bit with, uh, but they're still keeping the Costa logo on those ships and then just bringing all the carnival fun down below. But So we'll see how that transitions over time, but uh, Costa outright, we're just not gonna do. Yeah, another one we're just not gonna do anymore is P&O. And it's pretty easy not to do them because they're not, they don't have a real big footprint but they're kind of an older line with deteriorating ships, pretty uneven service, and we just didn't really like the food on there. So it's a line that we're gonna avoid. Like I said, it's 
it's pretty easy to avoid them though so not that big of a problem <laughs> yeah definitely i mean there are we did mention you know three of the worst ones on this list with you know msc costa and this one pno and they're at the bottom for a reason like you said it's a universal thing everyone agrees that they are not offering the best of the best. And, you know, MSC kind of gets a little bit of a bad rap in with these two, with Costa and P&O, because they're not, MSC is not quite down, down there, because, like we said, at least they have a little bit to offer in the way of, you know, their ships, and even though inconsistent, the staff. But P&O and Costa definitely belong on the do not list. <laughs> yeah. So that is the six lines basically that we try to avoid. All the other lines, we are full go on cruising on them. And we actually do have one cruise on one of these booked because as we said, sometimes we just can't avoid it. So we are booked on an NCL cruise uh, because we do like NCL, we just, uh, we're gonna have to guard our wallet for two <laughs> weeks. So Get one of those little pouches you wear <laughs> inside yeah. your pants kind of thing. Yeah, NCL was going <laughs> doing a transatlantic at a time that no one else is doing one. So we'd rather be on an NCL cruise than fly. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and it won't be that bad. We'll just have to kind of drown out all the pleas for money from NCL. <laughs> just kind of need to put the blinders on and hide your wallet. We should be okay for two weeks. That's right. <laughs> so hopefully, guys, this is helpful to you if you're trying to make a decision on any of these. Let us know in the comments what you think, if you agree with this list, if you would add your own list in here as well. You know, everyone is definitely a little bit different. So, guys, we've got lots more content here on the channel for you. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and leave your questions down in the comments.